Just to run through uh, some of the numbers, uh, total advertising seen in a range of uh, minus 1% to plus 1% in the third quarter. You're saying uh, that uh, you actually had better than expected total advertising revenue. Uh, first yeah. half total advertising revenue down 5%. Uh, you did see it down 6% at the first quarter, so a little bit of an improvement there. Let me then start by asking you about the risks around Brexit and how that's impacting advertising revenue. It's been a challenge all year. Is it now stabilising? Look, I think it's been a challenge for the last three years, to be honest, because the spot advertising market for broadcasters went down in 2016 and hasn't really come back. So it's been down every single year since 2016 after a lot of positivity before that. So I think Brexit and the prolonged uncertainty isn't has been a factor in the ad revenue performance of broadcasters. But I think also remember last year we had the World Cup which was this amazingly huge event. And that was also very positive for advertising. So we've got very tough comps on this time last year, so certainly in June last year. I think, though, having said all of that, this is better than expected. And we had a really good late surge in June because Love Island boosted ad revenue, particularly on uh, video on demand. So our online performance was very, very strong uh, in June. So I think actually evens it out. I mean, your question more generally is, uh, you know, would British business like certainty? Um, I think certainty would certainly give us um, uh, stability in the ad revenue market, which would be very welcome. Carolyn, I'm glad you brought up Love Island. Don't worry, we'll get on to that in just a moment. But just to stick on Bre just to stick on Brexit, uh, uh, j j just for a second, you're saying you're saying that you're going to deliver 20 million pounds of cost savings over the full year. Is that uh, yeah. to mitigate the impacts that you're seeing on this advertising revenue from Brexit? And is it something that you might have to increase as the year goes on in terms of the costs? So we've already talked about increasing our cost uh, program. I mean, the way we look at this is it's continual improvement. And actually what we're doing is we're in the middle of a digital transformation. We are transforming our business internally digitally and externally digitally. And so whether that is launching BritBox, which is a digital service, whether that's doing an ad tech deal so we can do targeted advertising on VOD, that's all about digital transformation. So digital transformation will also allow us to be uh, looking for cost efficiencies, but also productivity savings. So we are doing that. So we increased our cost savings by five million quid, partly given the economic environment, also because we're investing in the business. We're trying to offset the considerable investment that we're making in the business. I mean, I say considerable, but if you, you know, there was some essential investment we had to make in tech, in data, yes. in analytics, uh, all of those areas. And we're doing very well on that. I mean, we're well on track on that, but we're also investing yes. in BritBox. So we are offsetting through our cost savings program as much as we can. So we're trying to control what we can control on the costs, uh, which is obviously the right thing to do. It's being very disciplined about that. Carolyn, on BritBox, how long before it starts making a positive impact to profit and cash flow? So as soon as we can do that, really, I mean, we obviously have a business plan. We haven't we haven't shared that business plan with the market yet. We want to launch and then we want to communicate uh, some of the detail behind that uh, as we go. But clearly, we know what the break even point is. Um, and, and actually, we really do believe we can do that. Uh, we believe we can start returning value to shareholders. The only thing I would say is that BritBox is not a, a one or two year return. You know, we, you have to look at this as a five year plan because it is something you want to build uh, and you don't want to have to take decisions by quarter about BritBox. You want to take the decision for the long term uh, where you're creating value over the five years plus. So uh, I Carolyn, think it is a different I, way of looking at it. Carolyn, some critics would say you're maybe yeah. a little bit late to the table with BritBox. Obviously, you've already got the competition of Netflix and Amazon, yeah. but also the looming yeah. launch of Apple TV Plus and Disney Plus. How are you going to deal with that? So I think the way you deal with that is that this is a very distinctive, differentiated service. It's a brand that will stand for um, originated content in Britain. Uh, so Brit it's British originated content with a small b. It's you know, we have access to both BBC and ITV's libraries, which will be curated and, and reformed, but also the recent past, and also we will be commissioning original content. So, the, you know, we are very, very aware that there are people with very deep pockets in this market, in the streaming market. Um, but the fact is that viewers 
are enjoying streaming services and many, many households now yes. uh, are taking multiple su subscriptions. So five million homes in Britain already take multiple subscriptions and that is increasing by the day. And we are going to be part Caroline. of that. And I think the feedback from viewers is very positive. Yes, it certainly is on Love Island, Carolyn, because it's uh, this, this UK season most watched show ever on ITV2, and now you're moving to two series a year in 2020. But is this yeah. as good as it gets in terms of ITV programming, Love Island? Well, I don't think so. I think only talking about Love Island when it comes to ITV is not the range of what we do. If you just think about Manhunt was uh, a massive drama, 9 million viewers uh, this year, so in, the, in this half. In fact, ITV had the top four new dramas this year. And a lot of people don't really think about us as doing that. So whether that was Manhunt, Cleaning Up, Cheat, you know, they were all amazing dramas. We also do big sporting events. We've got the Rugby World Cup coming up. We had the World Cup, as I said, last year. We do the horse racing brilliantly. We do amazing factual entertainment. Uh, so, you know, we have a range of programs. I'm a Celebrity, actually, was the biggest show that we've ever done for I'm a Celebrity. It hit at peak 10.8 million viewers. So you can't get those audiences anywhere else. You can't get quality, simultaneous audiences in any other medium. And that's why we really have a belief that as we transform ITV, we, are, we remain a kind of enduring cornerstone of entertainment in Britain. Uh, and of course, we have our global production uh, uh, division that does a whole load of uh, a range of other things as well. So it's not all about Love Island, Carolyn. but this summer, Love Island has been the thing. Carolyn, in 10 seconds, what does Boris as Prime Minister of the UK mean for business? Um, I think we need to look at his track record in London and when he was mayor. Um, I think he was very pro-business. He did a lot of work in London. He invested in infrastructure. He actually was optimistic about London when he was mayor of London and uh, yep. very optimistic about Britain. And I think we need that. We need a bit of optimism and energy and kind of future-facing uh, initiatives.